Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the pretty little village of Houghton in West Sussex. It's about 11 and a half miles to the east of Chichester and four miles north of Arundel in the South Downs National Park. And we're going to be doing a roughly four and a half mile circular route from Houghton, sticking close to the River Arran. We'll be exploring a, a couple of small hamlets at uh, North and South Stoke. We'll be seeing a couple of pubs, a couple of churches, three bridges at least, and some quite stunning views of the South Downs. And hopefully some interesting things along the way. Now I'm filming at the end of May. It is a gorgeous sunny morning. Sun's out. A little bit of cloud, but not too much. It should be perfect conditions for walking. So do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at the Amberley Museum, which has uh, got a free car park. The um, museum itself was established in the 1970s and it's located uh, in an old chalk quarry. Uh, the original chalk pit started here ooh, in the early 19th century and they were pretty big, employing over 100 people. The actual museum today houses a number of the original lime kilns, as well as a diversity of industrial and local heritage collections, including uh, narrow gauge railways and vintage buses. And the old quarry tunnel here was used as a film location uh, for the 1985 James Bond film, A View to a Kill, with Roger Moore and Grace Jones. Anyway, uh, we're not going to have time to look at the museum today, but uh, dogs are allowed if you're thinking of going. <laughs> and right next to the museum is the rather cute uh, Amberley Railway Station, opened in 1863 when uh, part of the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway. Now the uh, Arran Valley Line or Mid-Sussex Line runs through here. I think the next stations are, uh, well, Poolborough to the north, Arundel to the south. You can certainly get to London from here. Well, before we head out into the countryside, we'll have a little wander through uh, Houghton. Now, a little confusing. I know we've just seen Amberley Museum and uh, Amberley Railway Station, but uh, Amberley itself is some way away. Um, where I am now is actually Houghton Bridge, which is on the uh, uh, eastern side of uh, Houghton Bridge over the River Arran. Um, the rest of Houghton is on the western side of the bridge. Well, I'm just uh, wandering along here, just on the left. Uh, if you look on an old map, it shows uh, that there was a mini canal along here that's uh, now been filled in. I presume, <laughs> but I'm not sure, that it, it probably was used for shipping lime and chalk from uh, the quarry. The river was uh, navigable. Uh, Indeed, further upstream along the river, there was uh, the Way and Arran Canal. And basically, you could navigate from London down uh, all the way to the sea at uh, Littlehampton. And some lovely old buildings here. That's the old uh, schoolhouse. It certainly looks like a school, doesn't it? And there's the uh, Bridge Inn. Not sure how old it is, but uh, it does show on an 1897 map. And I think it's probably going to be our final destination. And there's Houghton Bridge itself. Uh, we'll get a better view of it later on when we're by the river, so I'll tell you all about it then. A lovely little cottage over the road, the Turnpike, uh, built in 1813, I believe. And uh, indeed, it, uh, it was a toll house for a, a turnpike road that uh, passed through here. OK, well, we're heading out into the countryside now. So we're now on the uh, sort of eastern side of the River Arran. And, well, the views from here, <laughs> brilliant, they really are. Isn't that gorgeous? So we're going to sort of follow the bank along here, and then we're going to cross over the bridge over there. We will be heading in that direction, but we'll probably just make our way back south to have a look at... Uh, Houghton Bridge, um, because we'll probably see it in better detail, say, on the other side of the bank.
We're just about to make our first crossing of the River Arran today. We'll tell you a bit about the river. It's uh, 37 miles long. It's the, uh, the longest river entirely in uh, Sussex. And its source is from a number of streams at St Leonard's Forest, uh, sort of Horsham Way to the north. And it flows down to the sea at Littlehampton. And uh, it's one of the fastest flowing rivers in England. And it floods a lot. In fact, if I just slowly pan the camera around to show you the views, this is looking north, this whole area, the water meadows and uh, the floodplains. just crossed a rather impressive uh, metal bridge. Uh, we're now on the other side of the Arran and we're actually now on the uh, South Downs Way which is an old friend of ours. We've come across that on a number of walks in the past. Of course the whole trail is what 100 miles from uh, Winchester in the west to Eastbourne in the east and I think also this part is also on the uh, West Sussex Literary Trail which is a 55 mile long distance path that makes its way from Horsham to Chichester and it basically links up um, places that have got uh, uh, connections with, with writers and what have you. Well I've just done a little detour back along the sort of western bank of the, the River Arran just to have a better look at Houghton Bridge which is uh, in front of me here. It was built in 1875 replacing a, a much earlier one that had been built around 1438, 1440 and uh, you can see from the debris that's uh, floating along the, the river, it is fairly fast flowing, as I said earlier. And just panning around here, there's some tea rooms here. And I think this area was once a, a wharf in uh, days gone by. I'll tell you, it's gorgeous now. It's about 20, 21 degrees, getting quite warm. We've got plenty of water for myself and Logan. Okay, well, this is where we say goodbye to the South Downs Way. That carries on up behind me there. We're now going to head southwards uh, into Houghton. Well, this is one of my favourite pubs in the area. I've been in here a few times. The George and Dragon. Reputedly one of the oldest three pubs in Sussex, I believe, dates back to 1276-ish. I think the Mermaid Inn at Rye dates back to 1156, but I'm not sure. And it's said that Charles II uh, stopped off here during his escape from the Battle of Worcester in 1651. But it was an old coaching inn that uh, was once on the main road from Arundel to London. I'm just making my way down South Lane in Houghton. So beautiful, so many wonderful cottages, houses, so well preserved, and many of them stunning. Now, I've just been chatting to a, a local, and he put me right on the fact that there is a difference between Houghton on the uh, western side of the river and uh, Houghton Bridge on the eastern side. So, that little area that we were at the beginning is definitely. Houghton Bridge. <laughs> I better put that right. Okay, so we're uh, continuing to head south and we're uh, going to join up with the River Arran again shortly. Isn't that quite splendid? Mouse Hall, th thatched timber frame, bit of flint, looking stunning in the spring sunshine. I'll tell you, I loved house and it was so pretty, it really was. Okay, back on to uh, our route again and just passing a, a sign here tells us that we're on the Monarch's Way, which is a, a 625 mile long distance path. 
uh, that uh, is supposed to represent the escape route of Charles II after the Battle of Worcester in 1651. So I think it starts at Worcester and it goes to Bristol and then Yeovil and ends up at Shoreham, I believe. It's so peaceful along here. A few birds twittering away. A few uh, yellow irises out uh, alongside the bank as well. So we're going to follow this uh, path or track here all the way down to South Stoke. Oh, I'll tell you, you get some great uh, views along this route of the river. Lovely with the reflection of the sun today. Just a little bit too free flowing though for a, a dog dip for Logan though, I'm afraid. Oh, I could sit and watch this for ages. Another little pit stop. <laughs> Just looking back and uh, from here, you can uh, make out uh, the chalk up there, all the uh, disused chalk pits on the, um, on the western side of the, the river bank. Loads of butterflies about this time of year. Well, that's the way to travel. Welcome to Arundel Park, which uh, has been on the right hand side during our walk. So we are there. So we're going to continue along here to South Stoke and then hopefully we we'll cross the river and head back north. We had a, a little bit of an uphill bit there. <laughs> so the, the river is right down in a valley below me on uh, my left, but to the right, some fantastic views. And this is uh, Arundel Park. And oh, just looks as though most of it's laid out to meadow with this glorious, real vivid green that you only get in late spring. And there's a gentle breeze as well, cooling me down. Beautiful. Well, we're just about to drop into the little hamlet of South Stoke. And just on the outskirts, just by me here, is this delightful sort of 18th century barn. I was reading that it was uh, built by the Duke of Norfolk, and it's one of five that were built on farms around the Arundel area. This one is the only uh, one that's uh, left of the originals. The others have all been converted to houses, although it looks as though this one is now uh, a wedding venue. Oh, wow, isn't this uh, quite exquisite? It's the Church of St Leonard's uh, here at South Stoke. It's a two cell building, originates from the 11th uh, century, as you can see, it's flint. There's a nave and chancel. It's been altered, but not enlarged in the 13th century when the West Tower and South Porch were added. There were some extensive alterations in the 19th century, including the adding of corbels to the spire. 
because the village around here declined uh, very much uh, when uh, a fair bit of the land was enclosed for sheep grazing by the Arundel Park estate, uh, the Duke of Norfolk, from about the 1800s onwards and the new park was enclosed in the 1780s with fences and gates. Anyway, let's have a, a look inside. OK, in we go. Uh, it's going to be pretty dark in here because there are no lights, so uh, I might have to put some photos up, we'll see. There's the uh, font down there. And then just moving around, this is the, obviously the base of the, that magnificent tower. Looks like there's just one Sally, so I'm guessing there's just the one bell. As you can see, it's it's definitely hasn't been Victorianised, <laughs> if there's such a word. Just slowly uh, pan round and uh, just head towards the uh, altar. It's lovely and cool in here, that's for sure. And there's the pulpit on the right hand side. And uh, I do love these, this style of church, I really do. And then just looking up and seeing their wonderful beam across the top. Okay, well, we're now going to make our way to North Stoke and crossing the Arran. North and South Stoke are only about half a mile apart uh, and linked by a path, but there's no actual road. Uh, road access between the two would require quite a few miles driving, I think. So this is South Stoke Bridge, also known as White Bridge. Uh, and this bridge was built in 2006, replacing a much earlier one. Another bridge to cross. Now this is the Gurkha Bridge and it spans the original part of the river. Uh, back in 1839 a, a loop was cut off by adding a, a diversion north of uh, South Stoke to basically make it easier for navigation. Now, this section has now become quite marshy. The original suspension bridge uh, was built in 1876 uh, but that was damaged when an oak tree fell on it. And then in 2009, the Amberley Society managed to organise the Gurkha Field Support Squadron of 36 Regiment to uh, step in and build this new bridge. And this is North Stoke. <laughs> now, during uh, the medieval period, there was actually a ferry across the river at Houghton that was um, accessed by a path that actually ran through a ford at North Stoke. Uh, but in 1438, the Bishop of Chichester paid for a new bridge at uh, Houghton and the old footpath fell out of use. North Stoke was then sort of cut off, really, and the population dwindled and it became an isolated hamlet. But there was still some Lovely houses here, that's for sure. And our second church of the walk, St Mary's Church at North Stoke. Now there was probably a wooden Saxon church here. Indeed, there was certainly one mentioned in the, the Doomsday Book. And in the 11th uh, century, the, the present nave was built over the uh, old church foundations. The chancel was added sometime in uh, the 13th century. And in 1290, the building was made into a, a cruciform by adding a, a north and south transept. The transept on the north side was going to have a tower, but uh, a belfry was put up instead. In the early 14th century, the nave and chancel were divided by adding a chancel arch, and the porch was added in the 1500s. Interesting, it uh, was never restored in the 19th century. It was declared redundant in 1992 and uh, is now looked after by the Church's Conservation Trust. 
and in 2007 some archaeologists found ancient documents confirming a, a dedication to St Mary, previously it had just been known as North Stoke Church, and a rededication ceremony was held on the 8th of December 2007. Let's have a look inside. In we go again. <laughs> and again there are no lights, so fingers crossed we're going to be okay. Ooh, a pretty ancient font down here on the on the left. And again, yeah, this hasn't been Victorianised either. It's having a, a pan round. Actually quite atmospheric. So there's the uh, altar ahead. And just looking down to the right, this must be the south transept there. And then uh, over to the the left and the north, the north transept and the little tower above with just the one rope, so again guessing one bell. And just to, uh, ah oh, look uh, over here, this is <laughs> a hand has been sort of carved, presumably by a mason, isn't that brilliant? And then uh, the altar here. I love these, um, oh, I forget what they're called, are they sedilia seats on the side for priests and their assistants, I think. And there's the uh, window, a little bit of stained glass uh, there. Well, I just noticed in the uh, south transept up on the wall here, it looks like a carving of a sheep's head. Of course, this may well have been a shepherd's church because uh, sheep rearing was very much a, a big industry in the area. <laughs> At least I think that's what it is. <laughs> I just noticed above the chancel arch there's uh, remains of some painting. Can't quite make out what it is. I think there's looks like leaves, some fruit. I don't know. I wonder what sort of story is behind that. Well, folks, we've made it to the, the Bridge Inn at Houghton. We hope you enjoyed our walk today. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Cheers. Sorry, I <laughs> mustn't forget you. <laughs> Thank you.